Hey guys, Chef Star here. We're about to start our seafood elective class. So today we have our Atlantic Sim. Uh, pull this guy out for you guys to see. All right here. So this is what we're about to get started on. Hope you guys enjoy it. All right guys, so here's our Atlantic salmon. So the first thing that you need to do whenever you get fish in, so whenever it comes in from your provider, is just check to make sure that the quality is good. Okay, so one of the first things that I'm gonna check for are the gills, making sure that they're a nice bright red color. These ones are a little dark, but just given the nature of everything that's going on right now, they're probably not getting everything super fresh. So this one is good to go. Uh, the other thing that you're going to check for is the clarity of the eyes. If the eyes are cloudy, it can mean that it either had like a traumatic death or that it's also been hanging out in the uh, warehouse for a little while. Maybe that's been under refrigeration for a little bit too long. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you guys are going to need, make sure that you have your PowerPoint notes with you so that you can follow along as I'm doing the cuts here. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, same like any fabrication, just make sure that you have your cutting board and uh, your product nice and dry. So you don't want it sliding around because especially the more that I get into uh, cutting this fish, it's gonna release more and more moisture, okay? So just make sure that my hands are good and dry, make sure that the fish and the cutting board are nice and dry before I even get started. All right. so. I'm going to be cutting with belly facing me. So just so you guys can see this, and this is the same in your PowerPoint notes, I'm going to be starting on this cut right here. So I'm going to be going inside this portion of the belly and going just above this fin right here, which no giggles is called the anal fin. So that's about where I'm going to be cutting right there and going just above that mark. So first cut before I get going, just making sure right here behind the pectoral fin, right behind the gill cover, going all the way down to the spine. Then I'm gonna do, turn it over and do the same cut on the other side. That way when I'm finished slicing through the spine, I'm already gonna have a good firm cut right here. Okay. So here I go underneath the belly, make sure I get my knife nice and clean before I start. I'm going to make an incision here just to make sure that I'm getting through. And now that I can see the spine from the inside, right? So I'm going right here and just making sure that I can see the spine from the inside. That way I'm sure that I'm going above the spine and I'm not cutting through it. So a lot of people go from head to tail on cutting the salmon. Personally, I think it's your preference. However, you're most uh, proficient cutting. I think is the best way to do it. There are a lot of different ways to cut salmon. Uh, this is my preferred way for, uh, for sushi uh, because there's gonna be a little bit left on the spine here and we're gonna use that to scrape that can be used for a number of different things in the kitchen and on the sushi bar. So here I've got my knife all the way through, making sure that I've got my thumb on top of my blade here so that I'm protecting any of this belly meat as I'm slicing. So right here, I'm not sawing. I'm just gonna do a smooth pushing motion all the way through, putting some light pressure on top of the back of the salmon, making sure that he stays in place. So you can hear those sounds of the pin bones as I'm cutting through, making sure that I'm separating from the spine and I'm also scraping right against the spine. So I'll turn that over so you guys can see that. Nice clean cut. And you can also see from the salmon that I could see his spine all the way across, making sure that I have a nice clean cut there, right? And then this way there's no sawing motions um, and there, there's no parts of the uh, flesh that are torn because I had a nice smooth motion with a good sharp knife. So now I'm going to take my first fillet and I'm going to place it on my rack. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get through the head, we're going to cut through the spine, cut the head off, and then we're going to take the spine out. Okay? 
So like I said, with that spine, there's gonna be some flesh connected to it. So we can scrape that off and I'll show you guys what that's used for in the, on the sushi bar. It's so right here, good sharp knife, a little bit heavy. Just cut straight through the spine, no problem. Make sure everything's nice and clean. So now I'm gonna turn my side here, and you guys can see now I have the dorsal side facing me. I have the top side of the fish facing me with the belly on the outside. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my knife and get just underneath the spine here. So you guys can see this in the pictures in the PowerPoint that I provided for you guys. I'm getting just underneath the spine and the same thing like before. So just a little bit of light pressure on top of the spine and pushing forward. All right, so all I'm doing here is trying to remove the spine and as little flesh as possible. Once you get down here to this fin, right, the bottom fin or the anal fin, we're gonna make sure to take that off as well and keep cutting straight through. All right, so now I have the spine removed. So I'm gonna cut this in half just to make it a little bit easier to manage. And we're gonna come back to that later and I'm gonna show you guys how to scrape this. So right now I have my second filet, but on the top side here, I've got a part of a rib cage that I need to remove still, okay? So I've got one more step on this top part. Very slight lateral movement with my knife, making sure I'm getting it as horizontal to the, to the fillet as possible. Making sure that I'm getting just the top side off. Making sure that I'm not losing any flush with that. Okay, so now I have my, my dorsal fin on the top side of the salmon there. I'm gonna remove that. That doesn't have a lot of meat that I wanna save on it. Now I'm just trimming up any other little portions I need to take off. And then we're gonna trim this bottom fin and the belly side. And now I'm gonna salt this guy before I pin bone it. And the reason for that is adding salt, I'm going to tighten up the flesh making it easier to take the pin bones out. And so what that's gonna do is it's just gonna make it a lot easier with a firm flesh to be able to take those pin bones out without tearing the flesh. So the pin bones, and again, you guys can see this in your notes, pin bones are actually floating bones. So it's actually calcified nerve endings. They're not actual bones. This helps the fish be able to sense other fish next to it. So whenever they're in the wild, they're, uh, they're fighting for position. And so this way they can tell how many fish are next to them and how they can get a better position on the other one. So these are very important to take out. They're uh, very fibrous. Uh, these are not bones that you can eat. Um, and this is something that's, uh, that's very delicate to take out because if you, if you don't take care when you're taking out the uh, pin bones, then you can tear the flesh very easily and it ruins your product. So right here I'm applying a very generous amount of salt and this is going to be a 30 minute dry salt cure, okay? So we're tightening up the flesh, getting uh, some, uh, some oils released. So as, as I'm applying the salt, some of the oils are gonna release from the inside of the fish, come to the surface, and then we're gonna rinse it off. And then from there, we're gonna pin bone it, okay? So there are a couple of different methods for uh, pin boning, and I'll show you guys. Some people prefer tweezers. Uh, some people like to use pliers. Uh, it just depends on the type of tweezers for me. Sometimes they're a little bit too sharp when they come out of the box and you end up cutting the bones, making it very hard to take them out later. Uh, I prefer an offset uh, set of needle nose pliers. So that's what I'm gonna be using for today, show you guys how to do that. Okay, so after I finish salting these, we're gonna go put them in the region for about 30 minutes. And I'm gonna show you guys how to scrape down the spine of the salmon, get some of that nice meat that's still on there and what we can use that for. 
All right, guys, so I'm going to show you how to scrape down this piece right here. So you're going to have to go with the grain of the bones to make sure that you're getting everything out of this, okay? So in a, in a sushi bar, you can use this for, uh, for like a spicy salmon, anything that's uh, like a scraped salmon. Uh, you can also use it for a, uh, like a binder, like we saw in the Gordon Ramsay video. You can use that as a binder for that lobster ravioli. Uh, just mix it with an egg white. Uh, this can also be used for a number of different things. You can use it for some salmon croquettes. It could be made into a mousse. You can do a lot of different things. So this is just part of being efficient, making sure that you're using all of the product because seafood can get pretty expensive. So you want to make sure that you're getting absolutely everything out of it. Now, some people might say that use these bones for like a stock or something like that. Salmon's not good for, uh, for any kind of stock or soup. It's very, very oily, right? So that's not really the type of bones that you're gonna to wanna to use for a fish. So just using the edge of the spoon, so I'm keeping my thumb inside the groove of the spoon here. So I'm using the back side of the spoon, but I'm using the edge to scrape away like this, okay? So moving from the rounded portion to the edge of the spoon making sure that I'm getting everything out of these little grooves. So, yeah, maximum efficiency. This is something that uh, is gonna really start to save you money down the way if you're doing a lot of salmon. So the more you're doing this, you can create an entire menu item or an element for a menu item just from the scrape of this salmon. So here too, turn it up on its side like this and make sure we're getting out the rest of this. Using the edge of the spoon, not using a lot of pressure. Just making sure you're scraping out as much as you can. Okay. Container on the side there. So for like a for like a spicy salmon or something that I'd be doing in a uh, sushi restaurant, I'm just gonna add a little bit of sriracha, maybe some sesame oil, green onions, some togarashi, and you got a nice little tasty treat there. Okay. So once our salmon is finished uh, curing in the fridge, I'm gonna bring that back out. I'm gonna pin bone it and portion it. All right, guys, so I just rinsed off our salmon. It's been 30 minutes, so uh, it's got a nice firm texture to it. I'm gonna pull it off of my sheet here onto these towels, just make sure to get it nice and dry. So you guys can see it here. Just wanna make sure that my surface gets nice and dry. Dry up some of this belly portion also. All right, so now we're gonna be taking out the pin bones. So I told you before, you can use tweezers, like this is a set of Japanese steel tweezers. Or you can use a set of pliers like this. So these are not what I took out of my garage. These are only used for fish. And you can see that they've got an offset here. And so that makes it a little bit easier. So now I can invert and make sure that I'm pulling the pin bones out easily and with the, the proper direction, okay? So let's just make sure everything is nice and dry here. Mm -hmm. this guy up. Okay, so I can tell from the direction of the bones that they're going this direction, so I need to pull out that way, okay? So identifying where the pin bones are they're just above the spine. And as you can see right here, you can see the pin bones coming out right here. One thing that you can do to make sure that, they, uh, that they're exposed, you can run your finger across. You can use the back of your knife also to run across that line, make sure that all the pin bones are coming out. Or what I like to do is as I'm going through taking the pin bones, I lightly press the flesh together and that way it's exposed and it's easily extracted, okay? So let's get going on this. I'm gonna start taking these pin bones out. Just start at the very front where, uh, where you disconnected the, uh, the head from, from the rest of the body. And that's where you're gonna get your first pin bones. And these pin bones are running throughout the fish 
about two thirds of the way. So as you approach the tail, the back third of the fish is not gonna have any pin bones. And the reason for this is that the muscles are much more well developed near the tail as, as they're swimming. And so the pin bones are not necessary toward the back end of the fish. They're only in the front two thirds. So as I'm going, I'm extracting the pin bones and I'm just keeping them here in my hand. Uh, a lot of people will use like a separate container to put them in, I think that slows me down. I just do it this way, just light amount of pressure, pulling out on the pin bones. And then I'm gonna have James come around uh, and get a little bit closer. He's gonna get on my right side and uh, take a couple of pictures so that I can share these with you guys and show you an up close shot of me taking these pin bones out. So another thing with uh, washing your salmon off, I didn't touch on this earlier, but I'll, uh, I'll also go over this in the Zoom meeting, is whenever you have uh, a salmon, there are, are a lot of different other kinds of fish that have a slimy layer on the outside. Now this isn't just because they were poorly taken care of or something like that. They actually produce this layer of slime on the outside. One, so that they're more slippery whenever they're uh, going to fight other fish when they're fighting upstream, but also so that they can avoid predators, right? So if a bear goes to grab them with his teeth, then it's a little bit harder for him to grab onto that flesh because they are a little bit slippery on the outside. So I can tell going through here that there are no other pin bones. These are really, really light through here. So I've got all my pin bones removed for this side. Okay, so I'm just gonna set these aside. So now I'm going to start breaking this down. So I'm going to take off this front portion so that I have even fillets going throughout. So again, this part can be scraped. You can use it for a number of different things. So here I want to make sure that every portion is fairly accurate. Now in, in different restaurants, you might be weighing these out. Uh, for myself, I like to use just an approximation of size. So I usually use my palm as a guide. So I'm gonna flip this guy around so that I'm right-handed. I can use my right hand here to cut and I'm using my left hand to get my portion, right? So for me, I'm looking for something that's the size of a sheet of nori when I'm doing this for sushi. So I'm gonna use my palm minus my thumb, right? So it's just my four finger palm and that's what I'm gonna be using for size straight through. I leave the uh, the belly portion attached so that it stays fresh and that I can take it off whenever I'm ready to use that piece of fish. Because in sushi in Texas you have to freeze all of your fish for at least seven days to ensure that you're killing all uh, possible bacteria and parasites. So when this is frozen that's going to be a protective layer keeping that that flush uh, a little bit more fresh. I'm going to go all the way down and then this tail portion here, I'm going to trim this up a little bit. This is going to be the last piece that I don't get a fillet out of. So typically this is a portion that you'd be able to uh, give to the kitchen. Uh, they, they use different parts of the salmon for different items. And so that's a piece that I can give out to the kitchen. Uh, you can use this on the inside of uh, rolls for sushi also, but you can tell just in the, uh, in the makeup of the muscles that they're running linear. So you can see that the muscles are running down the line of the fish, running down the tail, and that, that's got a, a much more compact muscle grouping. Whereas here, they have the M shape that we discussed in the lecture, okay? So now that I'm finished with those, I'm gonna show you guys how to wrap this. So one thing, and what I'm gonna do later on is I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use a vacuum seal bag. So we're gonna use the sous vide bags and uh, vacuum seal this so it stays fresh. But a lot of times in restaurants, you're just packing this ready to go. Maybe it's being used in the kitchen, it's being cooked. So just take a piece of plastic. So whenever you're wrapping seafood, it's very important that you get out all the excess air and that you have a very nice tight wrap to it, okay? So up over the top, making sure I'm eliminating all the air up and over here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this plastic up to the flesh side, 
okay? And the reason for that is if these are being stored in a refrigerator on a, on a speed rack, or if they're being frozen, I wanna make sure that the skin side is down so that when it freezes, it freezes flat. If I set it on this side, if I set it on the flush side whenever I'm freezing it, it's going to mar the flesh so that whenever it thaws out, it's going to be misshapen, okay? So you want to always be sure to make sure you're freezing that on the skin side down, okay? So now I have all my fillets, and I'm going to go through and show you guys one more time on the next piece. Uh, this is going to be our speed round. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to pin bone it as quickly as possible and take out all my portions. Okay, so the same thing, starting with what's the head side. And so this is the other side of the fish, so I'm gonna be pulling out the opposite direction. Right, the pin bones are not gonna be running in the same direction as they were on the other side. So some people use like a spring-loaded uh, pliers, something like that. I just like using a very loose grip and then as I get above the pin bone, just squeeze down and pull up. Making sure you're pulling with the direction of the bones, going with the grain on that. So here, pinch together a little bit. These are very small pin bones. This is a very juvenile uh, salmon. This one's only about 10 pounds, so it's a very young salmon. And it helps with the uh, pin boning, I think, uh, when the meat is nice and uh, firm. So with uh, some of the older salmon, the, uh, the muscles uh, begin to loosen up a little bit and it makes it a little bit tough to take all those out. Okay, so again, cut this portion off toward the head. Okay, and there you go guys. Now I have all my fillets out. You notice I didn't measure this time, but you know, fairly accurate, making sure that I'm getting all these out, okay? And so I told you guys that I leave the belly portion on so that whenever you're ready to fabricate uh, and take this, this piece down, that's when I'm going to remove it. Just making sure that it stays nice and fresh, okay? So from here, just get right underneath that, that belly side of the rib cage there, just underneath and just removed lightly like that, okay? So from here, you can do a couple of different things. You can remove this to where you've got two different portions here. Uh, if I'm doing skin off, I'm gonna come straight down just to the skin and I can lift up and see exactly where I need to be cutting. So I can show that to you guys here. So just right down to the skin there and you can see a dark line right here. That's where the, uh, the bloodline is connecting to the skin right there. And so that's where I'm gonna start my cut, okay? So in a swooping motion, go up underneath, cutting underneath, making sure I'm getting as close to the skin as possible. And I remove all that right there, okay? Cut that skin off. So I like leaving the skin on, on, uh, on cooked salmon. As long as you get it nice and dry, it can be a nice crispy uh, addition. Also, it can uh, add to your presentation as well. So from here on this salmon, I'm gonna continue trimming. So you can see here, there's some like gray spots on top. So there's nothing bad in here. That's just where it was connected to the flesh, but that's not very appealing if that's something that you're gonna be serving. So right here, just right across the top, removing that top layer here. Uh, straight down. So here I have a nice trimmed portion, skin off salmon. Right, so you can see now why people pay more for skin off and bone out, 
right? So there's different ways to order your salmon. The one we got today was a whole salmon that's dressed. So all that means is that it's uh, it's scaled, and then also that it's uh, that it's got all the uh, innards removed. Okay, so with a whole salmon, you're going to have to remove all that yourself. That takes a little bit of time, takes some skill to remove that. Um, our our salmon comes dressed, and so that way all you're having to do is pin bone and portion. Okay, so I'll set that aside here. Now I'm going to show you guys how to remove the uh, the meat from the belly portion. So some restaurants will leave this on. If you're leaving this on for an item that you're either gonna grill or uh, maybe pan sear, uh, you're gonna end up wasting a lot of this really good flesh here because it's gonna cook unevenly. So you can see by the size of this piece of fish that this part is gonna take much longer to cook than this belly part. So this part is gonna end up being overcooked and you're wasting that really good fatty piece of salmon. So from here, you can see there's a really good fat layer on top, and then we have the skin on the other side. So what I'm going to be doing is removing that top fat layer right here and making sure that we, that we save all that nice, beautiful salmon belly. Okay, so just coming right across the top here. Peeling that portion back. And so you guys can see here where I've removed part of that. All right, so now we have this nice fatty portion here removed. And now I'm just gonna have to do the same thing on the other side and then remove the skin. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna come from underneath. One smooth cut all the way through. I'll turn that over. And remove my belly piece. Okay, so in sushi restaurants, this is actually going to sell for a lot more than, uh, than the rest of the fish. Uh, it's uh, very sought after, not the same as a uh, toro from a tuna, because tunas get much heavier and have a much larger fatty portion on them than a salmon does, but that's still a very sought after piece of, uh, of meat for a sushi restaurant. Okay guys, so that's it for salmon today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, look forward to you guys being able to come in and break down your own salmon.